So one of the awesome things about designing characters for Skyliners is going to a place that we haven't gone before. And so we look for inspirations for that as a starting point and then turn them into really colorful, fun personalities you can only find in Skylines. When we begin the creation of a character for the first time, we're looking for the little quirky corners of different personalities. We really want to focus on having interesting characters, having fun characters, having a nice variety of things. But each character really wants to signify like a single idea, a single message. Like Smash Hit, his big thing is he's got that big ball. So like every bit about him is that ball. How much bigger it is than him, he's going to smash you with it, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's just a huge spectrum, and there's something for everybody. Like if High Vault is not your type of character, there's Stormblade. If she's not your type of character, there's Spitfire. These are really fun, interesting characters, and they each get to focus on a different part of their personality. So what we do is we have definite style we want to hit, and we're always trying to make it better. So if we can see something and it nails the concept, that's good, but we want to take it farther. So like we want to take the metal and really damage it up. We want to take the weapons, you know, figure out where it's going to get nicked in battle, how the armor is going to work, what their skin is made of. Is it leather? Is this metal? Is it going to be scales, fur, all that stuff? We also try to get the personality of the character, think about their history, their backstory, all of that stuff. You can have a whole range of characters, whereas other games, is you're, you're very focused on one or two. You don't get to really explore a breadth of fun that I think we get to do here. So with our characters this year, our returning characters this year, we really wanted to give them something new, something fresh. Everybody falls in love with characters like Trigger Happy and Terrafin and Stealth Elf. And we got a chance to actually think about what do they mean when we talk about superchargers, characters that really love the vehicles that they're driving. So we had the awesome opportunity to reimagine them in their driver form. This time around, rather than taking a wow pow of the existing character, we reimagined the whole thing. So taking the old characters, the older ones that people know and love, and turning them into superchargers, that's an idea we've wanted to do for a while. We've really wanted to push the idea of the reposes and really redesign them, give them new armor, change what you're expecting. It is a supercharger. It's not an existing character that you've had before. It's brand new. It has new powers, new ideas. They're made specifically to drive these vehicles. To give the repose characters new life, we had to stay true to the original, but at the same time make them new and unique. So the previous Skylanders that we brought back as drivers for this game really took a lot of the elements of their original style. However, based on their new moves, added to them and made them bigger and stronger while still retaining what they're all about. Stealth Elf, she's always been a ninja. She's always running around with two weapons. We gave her a big, heavy minigun. We wanted to just change up what people expected. And then for us, it was really fun to be able to uh, sculpt a completely different version of that character. How do we take Trigger Happy and you know make him feel like a driver? We're going to put a helmet on him. We're going to put the cape on him. We're going to make him feel like a daredevil. And giving him that vibe with the kind of cheesy leather and outfits, and then putting a cape on him and helmets, and changing his weapon up so he's doing the two shots. Now he's got the one bigger cannon with the ring. The changes we've made to existing characters, making superchargers of them. It seems like the reaction's really good. Every kid that's gotten a hold of this game, every fan that's played with the new updated character has absolutely loved it. One of the most fun things about designing Skylanders and creating the game is designing the characters. And this time, for the first time, designing the vehicles as well. Now, every vehicle has a real world inspiration, but we take a unique twist, you know, in our Skylanders way, like Jetstream is to a jet fighter, or Reef Ripper is to an attack sub, or Crip Crusher is to a drag racer. The vehicles were the perfect opportunity to take something like the characters and bring something new to life. By doing that, we're actually able to go to whole different places we've never gone before. It opened up 
some areas, but it also can make us think about the new areas. You know, it's like we've always dealt with on foot. We also had to think about like, what is a vehicle in the Skylands? You know, we've, we've seen a lot of different characters and how fun and, and goofy they can be, but what's a vehicle and how crazy and wacky can we make it, but still with that Skylander style on it. Adding vehicles to Skylanders was a challenge. Skylanders has always been about bringing toys to life. So the challenge with vehicles was, how do we make these vehicles come to life? We don't want the vehicles to just sit there and just rumble. We needed to add that extra element. And we had a hard time at first uh, until the supercharging concept came about. We got to really just key off of the personality of the vehicle rather than just like its function. To do that with vehicles that are just as over the top and crazy as, as our characters uh, was a lot of fun. There's two sides of it. There's the in-game side, you know, the one you get to run around and play with, and then there's the physical toy. And we have to make sure that those feel right together. The most challenging part of the character process for us is the toy creation. Having physical restrictions on your work definitely changes it. It's not something most game developers think about. And as an artist, you can get away with certain things in games that you can't in a physical toy. The way we innovate year after year is we do a lot of prototyping. With toys specifically, we're always trying to outdo ourselves. Uh, this year we focused really hard on trying to get really exaggerated poses, really dynamic, fun shapes, and some nice silhouettes going on in the toys. Making sure they look really cool from all directions, like you look at them, there's always a new little fun detail that you can see. With Supercharger specifically, we did a lot of testing on vehicles, figuring out how wheels would roll, figuring out how the wings would flap. And we do a lot of rapid iteration with that, a lot of different materials, a lot of different people come up with the ideas. These challenges often presented new opportunities as we continued to work through them. So for example, Buzzwing was probably the hardest toy for us to get articulation to really feel great in. Making the wings not only expand out, but then also flap in one smooth push button mechanic was really tough, but I think it turned out great. We really want that that toy to kind of speak to the portal master and, and for them to look at it and be like, okay, what is that thing gonna do? So we have this back and forth of, you know, uh, refining the toy and then refining the end game. And then we kind of have this, it builds up to the final product and that's, you know, what we put on the shelf. So for Skylanders, the character process, it starts off with concepts and pitches and powers. We get the concept, which is 2D, a great drawing that everyone loves. And then we take that and we bring that into 3D. We create it, we put it in the game. Everyone's playing around with it. We look at the powers, kid test it, everyone has fun. And then eventually we take that and then we turn it into toys, which is really cool. So we start with taking the 3D model and putting it into the 3D printer. And after several hours, we get to see our designs come to life for the first time. Then from there, we start the mass production process, which takes many, many months, and we go through various rounds of iteration on that initial prototype, all the way through to the final mass production model that you see in retail and that you have at home. Then you have them in your hands, you get to turn them around and really see them and play with them, not just in the game. Making these video games comes from a lot of different corners, from a lot of different people, uh, with a lot of different creative interests. And we feel so passionate about continuing to make things that the fans really love. The cool thing is, it never stops being fun. <laughs>